Right. See people starting to roll in now. I'm going to give everyone a few moments to uh, connect and join. Still see people flowing in. Really looking forward to this today. It's always a fun event. Uh, and we're joined by some really fantastic folks uh, who I'll be introducing in just a moment. All right, I'll give it probably another 15, 20 seconds. Uh, I'll try to fill the awkward silence and, and show you know my, my lovely face so you can all be entertained while we wait for, for folks to join. Okay. I think we can get rolling. So hello, everyone. Uh, welcome to today's event, uh, How to Plan an Effective Migration to AWS. Uh, my name is Jonathan LaCour. I am the Chief Technology Officer at Mission. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about Mission in just a few moments, but before we do that, I want to introduce the rest of the panelists here, starting with Ben Schreiner. Ben, I'll let you introduce yourself real quick. Oh, Ben, you're on mute. I knew that was going to happen. Uh, so I appreciate it, Jonathan. <laughs> ben Schreiner, I'm with uh, AWS, and I run the migration practice uh, uh, called the Map Acceleration Program. Happy to be here. Thanks for having me. Awesome. Thanks. Good to see you again, Ben. And let's uh, get an intro from David. I am David Pulaski. I am the CEO and co-founder of Cloud Chomp, and I have my father making faces at me over in the corner trying to get me to laugh, but I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to do it. Um, David we are in, a uh, very cool Texas. <laughs> yeah, we, I had to search around town to find power during this uh, freeze. But we have developed technology that helps customers understand the financial impact of a cloud migration and then actually audit and manage that process through uh, various waves. And we'll talk about it a little later. Wonderful. Thanks. Good to see you again as well, David. Uh, next up, I'm going to introduce one of my uh, fellow mission uh, employees, uh, Scott Goldberg. Hi, everyone. Um, yep, my name is Scott Goldberg. I'm actually the solutions architecting manager here at Mission. So working with companies uh, who are new and experienced on AWS uh, migrate successfully to the cloud. Yes, and thanks for joining us, Scott. Congrats on the uh, promotion there. Um, he's now our newly minted SA manager, which is pretty awesome. Uh, and last but certainly not least is Francisco. Um, hello, everyone. I'm uh, I'm the VP of operations for Guerrilla Nation Mexico. Um, basically, work for Evolve Media, and also I'm just uh, newly uh, promoted to um, CTO of Evolve Media. So, thanks. Nice. thanks for having me. Congrats all around, Sorry, especially to. to yeah, exactly. Except for David, who is getting a demotion on his power and internet, uh, unfortunately. But we're going to make it work. We're going to make it work. Um, so a couple of uh, housekeeping notes before we we roll in. Um, uh, you can see here in the GoToWebinar kind of user interface, there is a section there called Handouts. Uh, in there, we have a migrations ebook and a data sheet uh, right there on the right-hand side of the interface. And there's lots of great information in there. I encourage you to download that. Um, I'll also point uh, uh, out that a lot of you have submitted questions when you registered for the event, which we really appreciate. Um, those questions will be entered into GoToWebinar's interface, and we will make sure we get to them. There's going to be a, a good chunk of time at the end to answer questions. Um, there is also a questions interface in GoToWebinar, so as you're going through, jot those questions down, put them in the chat, put them in the questions interface. We'll address them all for you. So. Uh, the last thing I'll mention before we dive in is that you should stick around to the end because there is a offer at the end of the event. So it's my little tease. Um, I'm sure you'll all be highly entertained and you don't even need to stick around for just that, but um, just in case. <laughs> um, so uh, as I mentioned, I'm CTO at Mission and it would probably be good for you all to understand who Mission is. Um, so we are an AWS premier consulting partner and managed services provider. Um, and uh, we are a partnered AWS. In fact, we're 100% focused on AWS, and we offer a very comprehensive set of services kind of across the entire cloud journey. Uh, so from architecture, migration, management, and optimization. So anywhere you are in that journey, uh, if you need us to help you plan your migration, uh, uh, do a readiness assessment, evaluate uh, with POCs, um, we can actually do the heavy lift of migration as well, which Francisco is going to talk a little bit about. Um, and then once you're in the cloud, we can help you manage the environment, uh, keep your costs under control, 
uh, and and uh, do continuous improvement in your environment. So, uh, you know, we're sort of your one-stop shop for all things AWS. Um, and um, I'll also talk a little about what it means to be a premier consulting partner. Uh, and uh, effectively, we are audited by AWS uh, based upon our experience and sort of our, our, our record, our track record. Um, we have to produce a lot of uh, case studies where customers are willing to publicly say that we did a great job uh, across a huge number of different uh, aspects of our business. Um, and as a result, we're one of very few uh, uh, premier partners here in North America. Um, sort of an elite club, which we're we're uh, delighted to be a part of. Uh, in addition, we've gone through a bunch of different competencies uh, and designations. So these are uh, additional things that uh, we provide evidence to AWS of our, our capabilities and skill sets that are validated by customers. Um, and so uh, we also have competencies in migration, DevOps, Microsoft workloads, SaaS, healthcare, and life sciences, uh, and a bunch of other designations as well. So um, we're really excited uh, to uh, be here and actually think now is a good time to show a quick poll about your reasons for my, uh, migrating to the cloud. So I'm gonna go ahead and launch this um, and uh, I'll, I'll give you a few moments to answer. Um, so we just wanna understand a little bit about why, uh, why cloud adoption is interesting to you. Um, and we hear these reasons all the time, right? Each of these reasons, but uh, uh, it'd be definitely good to know if they all apply to you or one applies to you, you can, you can answer one or more. Right. Seeing some more people vote. Wow, this is, uh, I will say it's very interesting, um, the results so far. All right, let me give one more second for votes to roll in. Okay, so I'm gonna close the poll and show you all the results here. Interestingly, we uh, we kind of got a, a good mix and blend across the spectrum here. Um, agility and productivity and cost reduction were uh, absolutely a factor for for many of you, but digital transformation is the number one, um, which you know doesn't really surprise me too much because to a certain degree, a lot of the other aspects are really um, connected into that digital transformation. So uh, really interesting. Um, so with that, I'm actually going to hand off to Ben to talk a little bit about why one might migrate to AWS. Yeah, well, you just hit on all four of them. So I was glad to see a, a good distribution uh, from the attendees. Uh, and I'm happy to see, again, digital transformation being uh, the biggest driver. Um, we're seeing that quite a bit at AWS, the uh, the pandemic that we're all living through um, and it has, has impacted uh, planning uh, for a lot of folks on how do they come out of the pandemic um, in a better situation. Um, it has accelerated many folks' um, you know, move to the cloud or at least consideration. Um, and I think we've seen a, a, a lot of people really in earnest um, looking at how they transition from doing IT the traditional way uh, to doing it in a more agile, flexible, um, and you know, kind of cloud-oriented way. So um, you know, we're happy to, to see that, and we're happy to be partnered with Mission uh, to help customers uh, with that journey because it it is a journey. Absolutely, yeah, and and I will say, based upon Mission's experience, you know, we've done many, many migrations over the years, and uh, interestingly, a lot of these reasons definitely resonate with what we see. Uh, from customers. Uh, we, we do hear uh, a lot more lately about security. And I remember a time, gosh, five or six years ago when, uh, you know, there were people saying, well, Al, you can't be as secure in the cloud as you can be on premises. And now you're hearing exactly the opposite, right? People are saying, I've got so much more control, more granularity. I'm only responsible for, for parts that I can actually uh, drive and improve. And AWS handles the other components and that shared responsibility model. So security has definitely been a big driver that we've seen over the last kind of couple of years really ramping up. Um, and uh, also reliability, right? Reductions in downtime. Um, the resiliency of the cloud is something that's very difficult to replicate on your own. And so that's a huge driver as well. Um, so as, as I mentioned at the top of the call, uh, we were joined by Francisco, who is uh, CTO over Evolve Media. We actually performed a migration for for Evolve and would love to hear uh, Francisco did that kind of match up with your kind of reasons for wanting to migrate as well yeah pretty much um, it's funny because this wasn't our first migration um, if just to like give you a little bit of a background to this um, I've been working with Evolve for 10 years and I think Evolve must have 
another 10 years before I started working with them. Um, when I when I first started with them, we were running our own hardware on a co-location in downtown LA. Um, and, and that's when the fun started, right? Because um, like at, at some point we got a notice of, you know what, like the co-location is, is gonna shut down. So you need to migrate somewhere else. And um, that, that was the first, like the first move towards, um, I think, I think we always knew we wanted to go to AWS because I mean, we'll, we'll talk about that in a, in a minute, but um, I think it was, it was hard that first, um, we're running everything on our own hardware and we, uh, we maintain the operating systems and we maintain all of the orchestration and all of the VMs and everything. And it was hard for us to let go, right? I think that was the first, <laughs> um, the first thing we were, um a little bit anxious of like just we had control of everything which is at, at the same time is a problem right you just need a lot of people to to be able to uh, to maintain all of that all that infrastructure and um and so we ended up with with two or three different managed hosting companies uh before we ended up in aws and uh, we were we we're sort of dragging the same old technologies and we're just mm -hmm. like moving bugs and moving problems from one server to the other, which at some point becomes unmanageable, right? Um, and that was one of the things we wanted to out of moving to AWS. Um, we didn't want to manage the operating systems anymore. We didn't want to manage um, some of the services we had to because we were running everything. So that's when the running or managing services versus just using AWS services that already run and work. That was one of the big things we wanted out of the migration. Um, again, we were, we were just moving this very old infrastructure we had. Um, so like just some numbers, we used to run everything out of 875 VMs where we maintain the hypervisor and all of the, all of the operating system and everything. Um, we ended up running everything on 70 instances in, in, in AWS, which um, we are a very small uh, DevOps team. So that um, that makes our life easier day to day, not having to uh, deal with um, all of those little microservices we were running on VMs and then trying to keep track of where are they running in all of this big like metal infrastructure we were running out of. Um, so that's, I mean, that was the, again, on the day to day, that's, that's pretty good for us. Um, the other thing is, um, we felt we always had like underlying hardware issues we had to deal with and had to quote unquote, because at the end of the day, like we were on some, someone else's hardware where sometimes redundancy is not what like it's not at the at the level you want to, or um, one customer's issue sort of dumps into your own hardware or stuff like that you can't even manage. Uh, that's one of the other things we wanted out of AWS, just this very high redundancy of um, it'll like the infrastructure will just work. Like we just need to make sure our our sites and our tech is running. And we don't have to deal with the rest of the of the issues we have seen in the in the last couple of years. Um, yeah, so I'm in Houston right now, and nobody for, has power. And ten years example, ago, I used to go <laughs> down down the street here, and I've been worrying about a lot of things. But one thing I have not worried about is my instance at AWS going down. I, it just <laughs> occurred to me right, I didn't even have to think about it. You know, which is yeah, and, and yeah, and and it. And, and, <laughs> yeah, and it and it happened to us a couple of times where like a local ISP would have an issue, and then we would be affected. Or like, there there are a ton of uh, of things that can happen uh, in smaller shops, right? And it comes a time where you you're not able to deal with those issues anymore. Um, the other thing was uh, we wanted more insight into uh into our billing and be able to manage that um we we were at a state where 
Um, it didn't matter if we ran one VM or we ran the 875 VMs we had, we were gonna pay the same monthly bill. So that was a huge um, item that we wanted to fix in the migration and just have the ability to um, tighten our code or reduce our workflows or, or be smart about how we manage some of the services and try to get those monthly billings on which we did. And then we're gonna also talk about that in a minute. And and like and one of the questions I was just asked, I mean, agility, again, we're a very small group right now. We're uh we have we're a three three people in the DevOps team. When all of this was created, I mean we had a big, I would say 15 people in LA just running infrastructure. So um that changes a lot, that changes. Um, not having to to worry about all of that infrastructure has made us, or has given us the ability to to now look into our actual sites and look into our actual tech, which we knew we had to work with and fix, but we didn't have time because we were just trying to keep it up and running. So, like at one point, you need to you need to say like, do you want it running or do you want it run it better? We were always just trying to keep it running. And at some point we'll see about making it run better, right? And and that's what we're doing now. Um, after a crazy uh, three month uh, migration window where honestly at, at various points I freaked out and thought we were not gonna make it. And I would run around the office just not seeing how we would be able to get this done. And, and and that's where mission helps us a lot. Uh, they sort of, um, they gave us the, like the insight and the clear mind of, they just saw the, the migration um, just as a task and not as a problem or an issue as I saw it, right? So that helps us a lot, just them being able to plan with us and always keep me, um, I get paced and knowing we were gonna we we're gonna get things done. Yeah, that's fantastic. Francisco, you touched on so many great reasons that someone might want to migrate, and many of the ones that I think people don't consider at first. They 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 don't really realize the benefit until after they're already there. And you talked about the cultural aspect as well, as sort of like, you know, we're used to this and, and there's this friction to change, right? And it's this sort of resistance and and not so much resistance but more of a it's that it's that friction it's that you know uh it's easier to stay than it is to go right um and you know one of the big parts of a migration is a migration readiness assessment and that believe it or not is a huge component of it is not just you know technical technological readiness but it's also organizational readiness and um it's a big job to 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 really drive that cultural change but um, you know, that's that's definitely a thing that partners can help with uh, is, is we can help you with kind of the messaging and how to get buy in. So, um, Francisco, as we continue to talk about your journey, um, maybe talk to us about, you know, the hurdles that you had around uh, getting the executive buy in uh, and, and any common concerns that, that you had to address in your story. Sure. Um, and then just to touch on that, when you're talking about about uh, the, the technology shift. Um, one of the things we were doing in this migration was also we we're moving off of VMs and moving into Kubernetes, which at the time we had just started learning how to do it. And so the mission team was key to help us, um, like they filled the gaps in the knowledge we didn't have because we had just started working with it. Um, and so that, that was one of the other uh, very important points that mission helped us do. Outstanding. Yeah, I think uh, at this point, it would be really good to talk about, you know, kind of um, how AWS and Mission kind of work together to help customers migrate. Um, so at, at this point, I'm actually going to hand it over to Ben. Whoops, I apologize. I just accidentally stopped my uh, screen share. So give me one moment. My apologies. Sure, I can stop talk, talking to it, Jonathan. Um, you know, we've been in close collaboration with the, the mission team. Uh, as Jonathan Mission mentioned at the, the top of the webinar, uh, they are a, a, a competency partner, uh, and that competency is AWS's best practice methodology for executing a, a cloud migration, and it, and it starts uh, with an assessment. We are, we're big believers in having data to make 
the best decision possible. So we gather data both about the team, like Francisco just mentioned, and about the environment. So, so everybody knows, you know, kind of the scope and, and what we're in for. Uh, so uh, after, we, uh, after we do that assessment, we move into uh, a, a, a mobilize or a get ready uh, stage. And that's really all about planning, setting up the AWS environment, making sure it's all secure um, and uh, uh, ready to receive uh, the workloads that are, are to be migrated. This is also a time for the teams to, uh, to assess their, uh, their training needs, right? So many aren't familiar with AWS and all of the 185 services we have. It can be a little overwhelming uh, I'm sure Francesco for for a small team, right? There's so much, which is fun, uh, like kid in a candy store, but also, hey, I've got to get something done. You know, where do I start? Uh, and that's again where mission and team are super helpful, kind of holding your hand uh, along the journey and and, and sharing their uh, you know vast knowledge of of the the various ways you can solve a problem on AWS and. For those that have been in technology for a while, there's there's always more than one way. Um, and uh, and mission uh, and the and the technical team there, uh, you know, with uh, with Scott are are very capable of of explaining the differences so that you can make the best choice for your organization um, and building that plan and that game plan to get the workloads in a in the most risk averse way possible. Right. So this is all about making the move successfully, but also just reducing risk. And it's using tools, it's using best practices, um, all of which come together in this plan. Uh, and then last and not least, and I don't want to minimize it, is just executing the plan. Um, you know, and, and uh, that just comes down to, again, sticking to the timeline, uh, making sure that, uh, you know, everybody is, is doing what, what is expected. Uh, and then we see a lot of folks during this opportunity, and, and Francisco, you mentioned it, that take this move as an opportunity to not just move to the cloud, but to improve their situation, like your move off of VMs into Kubernetes is a great example. We call that modernizing. Um, and usually customers will modernize somewhere between 20 and 25 percent of their total estate. Um, it's rare that, that folks modernize everything, but it, it does happen. It really kind of depends on your timeline and really your goals. But we see, uh, you know, people constantly looking to continuously improve even after they land on AWS. So it's a, it's a three-phased approach. Um, there's clear deliverables uh, each step of the way and our, our friends at Mission are incredibly well-versed at, at this process and, and executing it. Yeah, and, and if, I, if I can add to that, um, that happened a lot throughout the migration where we would hit a point where we would move from, like, from one vertical or, or one technology to the other and then when Mission saw like our our plan or the list of VMs or services we were we were trying to migrate, they would start just like checking checking VMs and saying like you don't need to run this anymore because like you don't need to run um, I don't know this cache because there's a service that will do it for you or like, you don't need to worry about uh, running the like dealing with the Kubernetes because then AWS will do it for you and, and like all of that. Um, if, if we would have started the migration by ourselves, it would have been so much info we didn't know and so much work that we would have done not knowing there was an alternative because like, we, we were new to AWS. Everyone has ran an, an instance in AWS, but like you run a machine and you do some tests and then you just leave it in a month or two. But just moving the whole infrastructure is a whole different story. Completely agree. Completely agree. You can either learn by trial and error, or or learn from other people's trial and error. So uh, yeah, and I, and, I, and I I would love to learn trial and error, but I just had three months, so there was not a lot of time to uh to to poke around and see how to make stuff work. Yeah, well well put. Um, and and actually, I think. Uh, uh, one thing we should do is actually talk about each of these phases uh, in a little bit more detail. And, and for that, I think we're gonna, we should have Scott uh, kind of walk us through a little bit. Um, so Scott, why don't you take over and talk about uh, kind of each of the phases for us? Yeah, we will do. So uh, like Ben mentioned, the, the, the assessment phase or, or 
MRA, right? Migration Readiness Assessment uh, is actually a framework built by AWS's many years of expertise, uh, my successfully migrating customers to the platform, right? So uh, they even went as far as building out a nice tool for us to use to kind of guide uh, the review process. Essentially, it's delivered as a about a half day workshop. Um, could be longer, could be less, depending on on the needs and the folks involved. Um, but where we're working with like various executives, key stakeholders across the organization, um, in order to sort of get really assess uh, your your readiness to to move. And so the goal of the workshop again is to just get all those folks together uh, to get on the same page, talk through your business and technology objectives. Uh, and, and really your preparedness uh, to better inform a migration business case uh, and then an overall migration plan. Um, and so in, in this manner, we can sort of help identify the gaps, uh, hopefully before you run into them, sort of, sort of what, what Francisco was, was uh, touching on before, um, and, and really enable you to make the most informed decisions uh, about your business case and, and eventual migration strategy. So like some of the things that come up are, what are your internal skill sets for prepping for the migration, managing the actual migration, and then operating in the cloud afterwards? Uh, how much financial planning have you done already? What are the licensing implications? How might migration change uh, the way you, you charge your customers or budget internally? Uh, DR, business continuity, security, like we talked about a lot of these things already. Um, and then I guess I'm gonna pivot over to, to David probably for a minute because the whole point uh, of David and 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 their cloud chomp tool is to really make this uh, assessment and 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 TCO planning uh, a lot more easier to manage uh, to collaborate on uh, internally. So, David, maybe you can give us some insight. Appreciate it. Can you go back one slide? I wanted to hit on the point Ben made earlier, which is everything really result revolves around data, and so. The TCO modeling process can be super effective or super vague, and that has a lot to do with the level of data that you're looking at, the quantity of data, how far back you're going, so you're seeing patterns in utilization over time. And so our objective since the beginning of time, we're an advanced technology partner. We are not a consulting partner. We don't move workloads. We don't resell Amazon. We're here to feed data through a collaborative framework so that Amazon and Mission can collaborate with you and help not just guide you through a process, but have all of that live data at everybody's fingertips. You're making decisions based on the latest live data that's available. So that's one of the most important things talking about um, a migration planning is making sure that that data is live and accurate and current. The other thing that we talked about in this slide was this idea earlier of modernizing. And our product also can help you with application discovery and what we call transformation recommendations. Um, you mentioned earlier, Jonathan, the quantity of services that are available from AWS. And we've developed a tool that looks at the applications that you have running and then tells you what native services at AWS you might want to learn about to consider some transformation and running on native tooling for a better price and better performance. And so a lot of everything that we're talking about with the, the MAP program, with this migration acceleration and the MRA, migration readiness, all of this has to do with feeding systems and people the easiest way possible with accurate current live data. And that, that if you want to go to the next slide, we can kind of pop back into it. But that migration readiness is really just the start of your journey. At some point, you're going to start planning those waves of migration. And what should we move first? Do we want to go by data center or price? Or do we want to go by on complexity? Let's just move some workloads first if we're new to the cloud, new to Amazon, to get our feet wet and really get our people trained and get some experience behind us. So through the right type of discovery, you can look at data through the lens of cost or complexity. And so that's really what we've always felt our job is to provide data so people, people can make the best decisions. And lastly, now, you know, so I worked on my budget for 2021 and um, I spent days and weeks on this thing. I'm not going to wait until December to determine whether or not I did a good job. I'm going to go back every single month. I've, even, I've already spent like four hours looking back at January 
And so the ability to not only manage the waves, but then audit your performance after you land through all of this advanced tooling and expertise is going to make sure that you don't just see a number of how much you could potentially save at Amazon, but you're going to have the people and the tools surrounding you to make sure you achieve those goals. And when you're off course, which we always are, you have the ability to see where and why and course correct throughout that full journey. So it's a it's a really a great team approach to make sure that you've set goals, but you have the tools in place to achieve those goals. And um, so that's that's the that's the the part that we play in this overall process. Yeah, I just want to piggyback on something you said about uh, like like piloting your migration, right? Getting something over there. A lot of times, and I think Francisco mentioned this before, it's 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 tough to get started, right? It it could it could be daunting. There's there's a lot of different tools and 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 services and products out there. Um, so part of the battle, or the most of the battle, is just is just jumping in. Um, and that's really where we can help, and we can use this structured framework. Uh, that, that AWS has put together. Because once we've done this assessment, we've helped you identify the, uh, gaps and you know maybe that's internal training knowledge. It could be things that go beyond just the technology requirements, um, but then we're there to help you with, with the actual like ground, laying the groundwork moving forward. And so that's really what Mobilize is about. Uh, that's what David was mentioning about kind of getting your, your pilot workloads over there. We just want to be able to help you set the, the groundwork from, from a networking infrastructure, something that you're able to grow into, uh, but maybe that isn't over-engineered from the start. And then we can look at uh, sort of migrating some of these, we call them pilot workloads, but they're, they're going to be you know subsets of your applications out there uh, that are going to be indicative of various uh, amounts of complexity, right? So we don't want to move all of the hard things first. We don't want to move all the easy things first, but we want to get a good sense of, of uh, the, the various complexities uh, and dependencies around moving your applications to AWS. So sort of starting with those, making sure that we've really figured out um, what a lot of those complexities might be or, and problems that we're going to run into. And then the last phase, like, like Ben mentioned before around migrate is just sort of turns into more of a migration factory approach to, to migrating where we're just going to be picking up uh, infrastructure and, and moving it over. And that could be uh, maybe Jonathan, we can tailor into the next slide here, but in, in a various different ways uh, or of migration methodologies, so to speak as to how we go about doing that. But the whole point is to collaborate and know upfront uh, what, what those methods are going to be. And that's where CloudChomp uh, really helps and, and, and having a discussion around it. And Scott, I, I just would add one note around that. A lot of people modernize on their way to AWS and a lot of people lift and shift and then modernize later. And so this idea of migration is about moving but you're constantly looking at new services that are coming out inside of Amazon and having a team of people that aren't just moving you into the cloud, but they're monitoring what you're doing for cost performance and, and tooling performance is an ongoing value that um, makes sure you're always fine tuned and running even after you kind of get there. Yeah, I and think maybe we would help like, I don't know if you have anything to say here, or we can all tag team this slide a bit, but your thoughts on the actual migration approaches and strategies. Yeah, so one of the things that is really important around cost management, around managing data, planning waves of migration is this idea of tagging so that everybody's not just looking at the right things, but this is what Amazon calls the seven R's. There's six R's. There's actually a seventh R now called relocate, which is a lift and shift to VMware Cloud. But um, a, a lot of this is also around speaking the same language, understanding the difference between a rehost and a replatform, understanding a repurchase. All of this can actually be tagged inside of CloudChomp's application. So when you're going to build your waves of migration, everybody now starts talking about the same language using the same vocabulary so that things can really accelerate in terms of your your move and um every machine is going to have one of six or seven different paths it's going to take and being able to speak that common language which amazon has made incredibly simple to do here lets you really tag that journey so that everybody is always working off the same live data and working off of the same same project that one of the things that i'm really most proud of is amazon has two 
big taglines. If you've been to the airport in the last couple of years, you've seen the builders build sign at the airport from AWS. And one of the things that we've done is, this is not a tool that comes in and does an extraction and hands it to mission and then they come back and tell you, here's what we're gonna do. It's a tool where you as the person managing your own migration with the assistance of professionals who've done this before, you're in the driver's seat. So it gives you the ability to get educated on things as that process is going. And the second thing is better together. Everyone working off of the same live data versus stale spreadsheets flying around um, enhances everybody's experience in these types of projects. There's just a lot to learn from this slide and making sure that everybody's speaking the same language helps, helps projects accelerate and makes it a more enjoyable experience for everybody. Very well put. Uh, thanks, David. Oh, Scott, I think you uh, we lost your audio for a sec. Yep, it's always on mute. Um, <laughs> so I, I was going to say, I don't know where we got this uh, graphic from, but but I, I really do like how it kind of walks through the different scenarios, the kind of milestones for doing each of them. It really is ends up being uh, the majority of, of, of the way that we, we migrate applications and workloads to the cloud. So uh, kudos to wherever we, we got this from. Yeah, absolutely. It is a good one. A um, late one night. Shall we go on to the next phase, the post-migration phase? Yep. And and uh, at this point, I think, Francisco, it would be really good to know, uh, hear about kind of your experience uh, after migration. What, what does it look like uh, in that post-migration phase for you? Yeah, I think that's when the fun started, right? <laughs> um, so, so you have this big adrenaline rush of just moving everything, right? And everything's stable, everything's running, but then you end up with a whole list of things you know you want to get back to. And um, just something that David mentioned, and that's been very important um, for Evolve Media is like we like we have a monthly operation cost review uh, meeting where a specialist will sit down with me and we'll go through all of our infrastructure and then he'll say you know what like if you grab all of this um, like RDS and apply for this uh, program you'll save X amount of money and if you grab like all of these instances and then running through this other program you'll get why amount of, of of savings right and so one of the big things we wanted to accomplish with the aws move was reduction of cost in our monthly billing and so out of the bat uh without being very picky about what we were doing we hit we hit like 40 percent like monthly reduction in our in our bill we're running the same websites. We didn't uh, we didn't downgrade anything. Uh, as a matter of fact, we might be running even more traffic now. So uh, so we're doing we're doing more with less. Um, and and we still have a couple of points that we need to go through where we can get uh, even more savings. And 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 now we're being a little bit more cautious, right? Because this is just more. It's not that low hanging fruit where you just knew you had to do it, right? So this is a little bit more um, more tricky, but but it makes sense. Like we've we've talked about it enough where we feel comfortable doing those changes. Um, the security assessment uh, happened on that same call. Um, again, new to AWS, there's a lot of things we don't know, but they keep on like bringing it up, uh, like password retentions or uh changes in policy like why are you why why do you have this policy versus this other and most of the times we don't like we don't know what we what we're doing but um the good thing is we've got we've got mission we've got aws right so they're they're working together and they're working for us and 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 they're and they're they're getting us to a point where everything is running smooth and we're and we're uh, and we're comfortable with how everything runs. Um, site stability, 
uh, after the migration has been great. Um, a lot of the human errors have gone away. And this comes, goes back to the running things ourselves versus running in through AWS services. Um, there's less things for us to like fat finger a config and then bring a couple of sites down. Have a lot of stories about that. Um, Come on, that never happens. Yeah, no, <laughs> no one's ever done that before. And then, it, and it's funny because, um, and I think while we were planning this uh, webinar, uh, I, I sort of understood how important the post migration was. Um, and I think we all think about uh, migrating over, getting it to run, but once it's moved and, and the adrenaline rush of the like 18 hour shifts and is it gonna run or not, when you do the DNS switch and you start seeing traffic and you see that nothing's, nothing's going down, once that runs out, you can start looking into all of those little notes you had, like let's go back and see about this service. Let's go back and see if we can run this with less hardware than we used to. We had no idea post migration was gonna be so much work, but it's it's that kind of work you want to do, right? Because then you you see you see the changes right away, and you see how infrastructure is running better, and um, we've we migrated over on i think april 1st 2020 if i'm not uh if i'm not missing up my dates <laughs> and and i think and and we still have that those monthly meetings and actually i have a meeting this afternoon with an account manager in aws talking about our plans for this year so there's a lot of uh help from AWS, a lot of help with mission. And, and most of the time they're helping us with things we didn't even know we needed help with. <laughs> because there's there's things we're now looking at that we had never done because we didn't have the time because we were dealing with some other things. And, and then having other people uh, look at our infrastructure and sort of talk to us about it the like the only thing that's happening is getting it's getting better every month yeah that's francisco really good summary of like that post migration rush right um your your journey is really just beginning right you're going to spend a lot more time in the cloud than you are going to spend getting there right yeah. um and that that is really you know you're hammering home you need that kind of ongoing kind of uh expertise right one of my favorite quotes uh from Andy Jassy, uh, the CEO at AWS and soon to be the CEO at Amazon, uh, is that there's no compression algorithm for experience. Uh, it's such a great quote, and and that is why uh, leaning into Amazon's um, uh, AWS has uh, you know obviously uh, many 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 customers running uh, production workloads, and they've learned a lot. Uh, and then Mission, uh, as a premier partner, we work with hundreds of customers, have gone through hundreds of migrations. Uh, and so, you know, that's part of our discipline of what we do is it's not getting to the cloud. It's once you're there, unlocking all of the power and that innovation, the agility, cost reductions, and so on. So that's where all, all of our kind of, you know, most of our services are actually around that, right? So we do a lot of cost optimization, which is a journey constant uh, vigilance and tagging and understanding your costs. And you can get really granular about, uh, you know, assigning costs to different cost centers and um, different products and, and, and slice and dice it however you like. And you're really starting um, to, to unlock that power. Um, and yeah. we also do and kind of, yeah, go ahead. So sorry, no, uh, and one thing I, 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 always, I always sort of forget, um, Evolve is not a tech company, like we're an online publisher we drive tech or we run our business through tech but at some point we had to say we don't need to be running mm. hardware like we don't need to bother with that i like i would love to because at the end of the day i'm I like i'm a geek and i like uh i like i like going into the guts of how things work but that's not that's not my job like my job is to have the site up and running 
the site being as fast as possible and all of our internal services running that will that are backing up uh, all of the of the sales and the publishing that Evolve does. So when when we were running on that data center, our tech team was a tech company just running everything from scratch. But we were not in that state anymore. We had to we had to let it go. We had to mature and say we're in, we're like we are an online uh, media company and we need to focus on the important thing, which is having our sites up and running and just do it as as best as possible. Hey, yeah, Francisco, see, a quick quick question. Did did you come to that realization or were you told um, you know, that that things needed to change? Like how did that because that's a pretty darn important thing you just mentioned, that that realization that we're not in the business of technology, we're in the business of serving the business with technology. And and I'm just curious, especially for the audience, how how that you know, uh, a light bulb moment happened for, for you? I think it was something that uh, it was said by a lot of people, uh, ex-CTOs, ex-heads of tech in Evolve, but then we just, we didn't want to accept it. Um, again, you don't want to let go, right? And then you're, you're proud of what you build and you're proud of the weird ways you get things to run and like sometimes you even just look at it and say i have no idea how this is running but it is and there's a little bit of pride in that um but at some point um we had to let that go um i can't i can't take uh credit for it but um but i, I think i was i was told that a couple of times and then I had to tell it to myself to realize it and then just move on and start thinking about um, how to how to get the infrastructure in a better state, uh, letting go of all of that uh, quote unquote power of running everything ourselves. Especially you when you're your down to three, you three people is, on your team. Do you find your job is more fun now than managing all that hardware? <laughs> it's a different kind of fun. Um, because I mean, there's always like we still need to keep everything up and running, and and we've got like some of the projects that we were uh, we were able to unlock because we have time now to do it. Like those those are still fun. Like we'll we'll be upgrading all of our uh, of our infrastructure and upgrading the versions of stuff we run. So I mean, that's that's again like there's still a thrill, like a tech thrill of will we break it or not, right? Which I'm pretty sure we will. Um, you're not learning and, if you're not, right? You gotta... Correct, <laughs> yeah. And that that uh, learning curve is, is big. Um, one of our biggest concerns was how will we recover from an incident in AWS? Because we've never done it. We've we've done it running our own um, metal uh, virtualization. We we've done it w many other ways, but that has come with time, and we just knew how to do it. Um, so so like obviously you don't want things to go down, but they will. It, it's not a matter of of if; it's a matter of when. Um, but now we're not alone. Like I, I know we've got Mission, and then Mission will and Mission has AWS. So it, everything changes, and I think uh, Evolve as a company has matured, and our our tech uh, stack has and will mature. So I think we're in a better place. Fantastic. Well, Francisco, I think that's a, a great transition into kind of. Uh, the next slide and some questions. Um, so as I mentioned, uh, many of you already asked questions as you registered, um, and, but please do uh, add your questions to the question area if you have additional ones. Um, and I'm gonna go ahead and move on real quick before we answer the questions and uh, remind the group um, that there is a special offer. So uh, that is a free migration readiness assessment and that's driven by mission. Um, so you can see here on uh, uh, on the next steps that you can visit missioncloud.com/slash-free-mra. Fill out the form, 
Um, you can also download the data sheets. Uh, and uh, this is a great opportunity to meet with a very smart person like Scott, uh, and uh, or probably smarter than Scott, to be honest with you. Uh, just kidding. Um, and uh, they'll walk you through that MRA to really help you understand, like, what is this going to look like for me? What is this going to look like for our business? Um, so you can unlock the same kind of innovation and, and, and power and kind of peace of mind that Francisco and team uh, have, have provided. Um, so uh, I am going to go ahead and go into questions. Uh, and let's see, the first one here was... Um, it's interesting. Uh, I'm, I'm hearing that uh, folks cannot see the slide, so I'm going to stop sharing and reshare. Um, I'm seeing it, but uh, you know, it's important that everyone gets to see it as well. So let me know. Can we all see it now? We'll give it one we more shot. Interesting. Well, uh, I I'm not sure why it's not showing. Let me. Uh, no, I'll give it one more. Back. It takes a second. All right, let's give it one more try. This is the life we now live in. Can we see it now? No. <laughs> Perfect. Well, let me just show my main screen and see if that helps. How about now? Uh, yeah. Not let's, sure. let's well, I'll tell you what. It's yeah. not all that exciting of a slide anyway. The key note is you get a free migration readiness assessment and uh, you go to missioncloud.com slash free MRA. Uh, and while I start going through the questions, maybe somebody can toss that link into the chat. Um, that way you all can uh, uh, also see our, our phone number and email, which emails at missioncloud.com. You, you got it now. All yeah. right. Thank you, GoToWebinar. For, I don't think they run an AWS. Us, that also includes an unlimited use uh, Cloud Chomp 30 days, too. Yes. To get the absolutely. data. It's a great opportunity. So let's uh, let's roll through some questions. Apologize for that uh, little technical difficulties. Um, so the first question here was, uh, I think, really uh, one that we hear fairly often. Um, we're interested in a rack space to AWS migration. Can we speak to that? And the answer is absolutely. This is something we've done quite a bit of, right? And I would say um, not even with one particular, uh, you know, kind of traditional managed hosting provider. Um, we see it a lot with many different managed hosting providers. And Francisco talked about this earlier, you know, they were in a kind of managed, more traditional managed hosting environment as well. And people often mistake AWS for like, oh, it's just a bigger managed hosting provider. And that's absolutely not true, right? It's a completely different world. Um, and so we do a lot of these migrations and that kind of post-migration kind of uh, optimization phase becomes extremely important if you're coming from a fairly traditional environment and moving to an environment like AWS where you can do a lift and shift, but you really want to like start taking full advantage of the power of the platform. Um, anything else to add on that front from the group? Lots of experience um, coming from different providers, different clouds, right? Different colos, hosting providers, Heroku, right? Um, doesn't necessarily matter. We've got folks who can speak to all of it. Yeah, and I and was going to say on the, on the on the cloud shop discovery standpoint, even if you're in a shared tenancy colo, we have tools to help you do all of the deep dive utilization discovery on any individual VM. It doesn't matter who the provider is. Uh, we can help you extract the data to make sure you've got the best data going forward. Yeah, Francisco, I think I interrupted you. I was, I was basically going to say something similar. Um, one, once you're thinking of migrating, um, you'll 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 get to make it run wherever you need to make it run. At the end of the day, is it's tech; it'll run. You might change a stack, or you might change something, but it's it's data. You just you just move it, you work on it. It'll it'll work. Yeah. With a sometimes with a lot of work, but it it will work. Absolutely. And and you know one of the next questions actually, I think David, you touched on this, but um uh the question is around assessing the proper sizing for ec2 instances to match your current infrastructure and, and this is a really nuanced one because you know the the uh the kind of um i would say naive answer to this is well you just look at what you have a number of cores a number of you know amount of memory and you could just a one-to-one -one kind of match and the answer is that's not really true at all david you want to speak about how cloud shop can kind of help with that yeah, so that actually goes, that, that's a really deep question because there's so many different ways of right sizing. So what we do when we extract data is we put things into different buckets by category and type. 
And so you may just have traditional right sizing based on utilization, where we're looking at deep dive utilization. We can say this is really good for what Amazon calls a T series. It's for things that don't, you know, have really low core utilization, except for, you know, it spikes occasionally. We can identify a really inexpensive instance type. But there's also something Amazon has, for example, with multi-threading, where they can help you strip out the core requirements from an EC2 instance, so you can lower your core count, so you can lower the enterprise cost of Oracle and SQL. So this can get from very simple to very complex. If you don't have automation, it becomes very time consuming. And so the ability to suck the data in and drop it into categories and buckets and agree, disagree, and modify by type with people who know what they're doing helps helps that process work along much more quickly. But it's a very, very, can be very complex and the financial impact can be dramatic. I and mean, we've helped a customer last week save a million dollars on their SQL renewal. Uh, just wow. by looking at the over provisioning of core uh, it was an enterprise account, obviously, but they were there was an over provisioning of core where all they needed to do was multi thread and the 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 right sizing and then multi threading just dropped the 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 renewal price way down and then they could be why on dedicated host right yes sorry david the the other thing I'd add to david's point um that most people who are used to a colo or used to uh you know managing servers themselves is uh, once you're on AWS, um you know you can pause an instance and change the family and, and actually put a different, uh, you know, kind of hardware underneath it, a, a bigger box underneath it, um, and then, you know, turn it back on and, and you've just upgraded. Um, and that's just something that blew my mind from a server, like that gets racked, like that's not possible without a PO and, and, and then what do I do with the old one? And it just, it was mind blowing that you could, right size, you know, based on what you see at another point in time, you weren't married to, you know, what you bought. Um, you know, if you needed a smaller one, you could downsize, if you need a bigger one, you could upsize. And then you got, uh, you know, auto scaling, if you just want to, to have a, a little bit more for a little bit of time and then have it, you know, kind of auto shrink that, yeah. that was probably one of the biggest epiphanies for me on, on what you get that you might not realize Francisco, like when you're, when you're doing things kind of the old way. That's why savings plans are so great, right? You can just yeah. go up and down as long as you're, you know, you've got the, a savings plan for that. You know, one more thing I'll mention is when we, when you, when you look at a certain instance type and you think it's going to land a certain way in Amazon, after you land, you may find you're still over provisioned. Yep. You never know how an application is going to run on new hardware when it's coming off a six or seven year old host. And so the ability to use a tool that can automatically audit to plan see where you're off course and why, and then recalculate all of your mathematics and algorithms is really, really cool. And that's something we just delivered uh, last month. We're super excited about. And we're excited that about was, that. <laughs> and that was exactly what happened to us. Uh, we, we started to thinking it would be core to core, gig to gig in memory. But once we went through assessments, we realized we were, like numbers are so lower it's it's it's, it's, it's your provision to peak right your yeah. provision to peak yeah and, and and because we could sometimes we just did it because we had the resources but then yeah. you realize like you're not even you're not even getting advantage of anything so. all right folks well we're we're at the uh at, at the bottom of the hour here and uh i want to um say thank you so much to everyone for for joining us today and thank you uh, very much to the panelists, especially Francisco. I want to really uh, say we appreciate your insight. At the end of the day, we can talk uh, until we're blue in the face about how great Amazon is and how much we can help you. But uh, having somebody talk about their personal experience and kind of what they learned in that journey, there's nothing more valuable than that. So we really appreciate it, Francisco. Um, thank you all who attended. Uh, don't forget that special offer, missioncloud.com slash free MRA, which is in the chat. Uh, and uh, we look forward to seeing you next time. Thanks, everyone. Thanks. Thank, Thank you. you. Take care. Thanks.